we're trying to sow unity, a unity of purpose, a unity of commitment, a unity of resolve, so that we confront the racism in our midst. And that means, certainly symbolically, we cannot have the Confederate flag waving in the state capitol. NAACP National President Cornell William Brooks speaking out against the presence of the Confederate flag at South Carolina's capital. It's worth noting the South Carolina flag and the flag of the United States are at half staff in Columbia, but the Confederate flag is not. Governor Nikki Haley claims she has no legal authority to order it to half staff, but a larger issue remains. Is it time to take that flag down? Let's bring in our panel. From Newsmax, New York, radio and TV commentator Ellis Henneken. And Skyping in from Los Angeles, political commentator and Newsmax contributor Larry Elder. To you both, our thanks for spending some time on Newsmax Prime. Larry, what's your reaction when you see the Confederate flag still on the grounds of the South Carolina State Capitol? Well, my first reaction is, why are we having this conversation unless there is some sort of evidence that suggests that this shooter was motivated by the presence of the Confederate flag? I see no evidence of that whatsoever. So it seems to me this is, one, one, once again, uh, an assumption that racism remains a major problem in America because uh, this lone nutcase uh, murdered nine people. Uh, back in 1969, a nutcase named Charlie Manson ordered the murder of seven white people, and he had a crew. Uh, we didn't have a conversation about whether or not Manson represented racism in America. So I think the whole conversation is a little bizarre. But to answer your question, I think this is something that should be resolved by the people of South Carolina. And I assume they had. That's why the flag was moved from the dome to uh, on the Capitol ground. And the reason the flag is not uh, lowered is because the General Assembly's job is to do that, not the governor's. And apparently it's fixed. So either the whole thing has to come down because it can't be moved on half staff. Now, that is, uh, is about the, uh, the deal that was struck. Maybe they need to revisit that. Uh, Ellis? You heard Larry lay out what South Carolina has done, took it off the dome itself, has it fixed really more as a, a historical reality, but not something that's reverential. Uh, and Larry told us th this, in essence, becomes a sideshow. I don't want to put words in his mouth, but but the, the real action that we have to be dealing with is the, is the murder in Charleston, not something uh, 100 miles away in Columbia. Do you agree exactly. with that? J.D., as a native of Louisiana, I know there are many wonderful things about people from the South. And, and one of those things is that we are a polite people. And it is cruel and heartless and deeply impolite to wave a symbol around that causes such pain to so many of our friends and neighbors. And for good reason. That flag represents some very, very terrible things in our history. And to put it at a position of honor on the State House grounds in South Carolina is abhorrent. And most of all, it's impolite. We are better than that, those of us who come from the South. That flag ought to come down this afternoon. Gentlemen, it may surprise you to hear that a version of the Stars and Bars, not that campaign flag, but another, uh, actually flies over a veteran cemetery in Phoenix, Arizona. Why? Because a Civil War battle took place in the Arizona Territory and there were Confederate, um, Arizona as a territory actually had Confederates uh, fighting in that battle. It is there for history, not for reverence. Uh, and I think we ought to be able to make that distinction. Can we not, Larry? J.D., my mother is from Alabama. My dad is from Georgia. We discussed the, the flag, and they feel that a lot of people in the South sincerely believe that it is a reflection of Southern pride. I understand uh, what Ellis is saying. I don't doubt his sincerity, but there are a lot of people equally sincere who feel very differently. Let them resolve it. All right. The state of Texas resolved the image of the Confederate flag on vanity license plates, a, a court uh, ruling saying that the, uh, the licenses actually belong to the state of Texas and not an appropriate place to have the Confederate flag. So Texas has made this decision, Ellis, um, your take on what's been done in the Lone Star State. Good. They ought to yank it away from as many places as possible. Put it in a museum as, uh, as folks in South Carolina and the White House are suggesting today. It is not crazy, gentlemen, for the African-American citizens and other well-meaning people in the South to consider that flag a symbol of some pretty terrible things. It has been used awful, awful, awful reasons. In fact, the one in South Carolina didn't go up in the, in the Capitol there until 1962, right in the most virulent days of segregationism in South Carolina. Decent people in that state to say, we are better than that, we are more polite than that, we are more decent than that, take that flag down. It is time. It is time. 
Last word to I, you, I never, Larry Elder. I never suggested that black people were crazy to be offended by the Confederate flag. The issue regarding Texas is whether or not these licenses rec represent government speech or private speech. If it's private speech, the First Amendment applies. And I think we need to get, think about whether or not if somebody came up with a, with a license plate about Malcolm X or about Che Guevara, whether or not we'd be okay with the state shutting it down. I think that the majority decision was wrongly decided. And the reason Clarence Thomas sided with the majority, in my opinion, is he's a black man from the South and probably feels the way Ellis feels about the symbol. But I think the bigger issue is freedom of speech, First Amendment. So we will continue to have our discussions in the days ahead. We're coming back.